Oops. Come on, that's funny. <laughs> All right. The Apostle Paul wrote <clears throat> in Romans 7, Know you not, brethren, and in brackets he said, For I speak to them that know the law. This makes me think that in the audience there are believers which are Jews and now a part of the body of Christ. And the beautiful thing when you are in the body of Christ, you're no more a Jew if you were a Jew when you first believed, <clears throat> nor a Gentile, a Greek, a pagan. Because what happens is when a sinner, when an ungodly sinner, an enemy of God, according to Romans 5, believes he receives <clears throat> the glorious gospel of Christ, the oppression of God, this person, the Jew or the Gentile, is no more a Jew, no more a Gentile, but becomes a member in particular of the new creature, the body of Christ. <clears throat> and the body of Christ is the revelation of the mystery. It's a body of believers, is the church, which is made up of many women who have believed, received the God, glorious gospel of Christ, in which we have no part. We just want, we are on the receiving end. We believe. Everything has been done by the Lord. And this is something that, of course, for the flesh creates a problem because how is that possible? Uh, no, the possible is... <laughs> When we are sinners, we are <clears throat> ungodly. We are enemies of God. We have no spiritual strength. We cannot save ourselves. We can't contribute to our salvation by any type of work, ritual, or religiosity, whatever. We need to accept the reality. We are sinners, all of us. <laughs> all are sinners come short of the glory of God. We are doomed, so to say, because we are under the curse of sin. And we need a Savior. And praise be to God. God delivered for us the Savior, Christ. Because uh, Romans 4.25 says, Christ was delivered for our offenses. Offenses, sins, transgressions. And was risen again for our justification. You can't do anything better than this. Nobody can. I sure he cannot, but I don't know anybody can. That's why God saves us by grace, through faith. And that's not uh, our works. Our works is the work of God. So no man should boast. We, should, we will boast in the flesh. You know, I've done this, I've done this, I didn't do this. Christ, the innocent, the righteous, the holy Son of God, Who knew no sin, huh? who was not in the line of Adam because his father is God, was and is and will always be God the Father. Christ was conceived by the power of the Holy Ghost, <clears throat> fulfilling Genesis 3 15 and Isaiah 7 14. A virgin shall conceive. And shall bear a son, and he would call your name is Manuel, which interpret is God with us. He was born by the power of the Spirit. His blood was the blood of the Lord, God of the Father, it was not the blood of Adam. Christ fulfilled prophecies after prophecies in his life. He was innocent, he's pure, he knew no sin. But he, he died for us, sinners. So, by believing we may be made the righteousness of God in him. 2 Corinthians 5. 2 Corinthians 5. Verse 21 it says. For he, that's God the Father, hath made him, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteous of, of God in him. Okay, let's go back to Romans 7. 
I want to just have something here. There are some, you know, titles. These titles, yes, this is not a King James Bible. These are titles that the editor put. Forget it. Well, with the text of the Bible that we study is here. No, you know. So practically, now in the body of Christ, there are Jews, there are Gentiles, but in reality, there are no more Jews, no more Gentiles. They're members, in particular, of the new creature where Christ is the head. And we are the members. He says, no, you know, brethren, for I speak to them, they know the law, how that it, the law has dominion over a man as long as he lives. And then he goes in details and explains. For the woman which has a husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he lives. But if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law of her husband. So Paul is using an example to make us, to help us to understand. So then if, while a husband lives, <coughs> sorry, she has been married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law. So that she is not adulteress, though she be married to another man. Now, this is colossal because this was just an, a comparison, an example to help us. Wherefore, my brethren, so they are members of the body of Christ, <coughs> ye also, you see this, ye, plural, not you, individual, ye also have become dead. Of course, you're included, but the letter is written to the body of Christ, ye. Have become dead to the law. How? By the body of Christ. That ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead. Who's that? The Lord Jesus Christ. That we should bring forth fruit unto God. From when we were in the flesh, <clears throat> when is that? Before salvation, we were in the flesh. Before believing this glorious gospel of the cross, the gospel of Christ, Paul says in Romans 1.16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. He doesn't say the gospel of the kingdom. He never preaches the gospel of the kingdom, okay? Because it is the power of God, the gospel of Christ, unto salvation, the power of God unto salvation, the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes nothing is required but believing, receiving by faith, by grace through faith. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. So it doesn't matter, you know, if you are born in Israel or if you're born anywhere else in the world, you get saved by grace through faith. You get saved thanks to the fact that Christ shed his blood. All have sinned, all, for all have sinned, Romans 3, 23. And, you know, come short to the glory of God. That's the condition of every person. Starting with me, eh? So then just in case you think I put myself on a pedestal, Holier than thou, I'm not. <laughs> Through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. In other words, it says here, yeah, being justified freely. Hmm? Let's go there. For all have sinned and come short to the glory of God. Being justified freely. By his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. The Lord said to Adam and Eve in the, in the garden, Of all the trees, of the fruit of the trees which are in the garden, there were many trees, okay? But particularly there were two trees the tree of life in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The Lord says, Of every tree, you might 
freely eat, except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, because the consequence would be death, which would be falling from that position of fellowship with God, and from that position becoming sinners. We know the story, but the point I want to underline freely, because if we receive anything from Almighty God, the Creator of the heaven and the earth, the Godhead, the Father, the Word, the Holy Ghost, and this three of one, Romans 1, uh, John 1, 5, 7, is by grace, is a free gift. We can't work for it. We don't deserve it. We don't, you know, sometimes, you know, our flesh says, I'm worthy because look at, no, no. You've got to understand this condition. That's the condition in which we are born in Adam. All are sin. We have all sins. Oh, <laughs> a mountain. Now, people say, well, we all sin. Yeah, okay, but somebody needs to pay the consequences of this sin, you know. If you go and rob a bank, typical example, you get caught and they find out you, you robbed, you know, bank, uh, you know, t $10 million, whatever it is. I mean, you're going to go and uh, be thrown into jail if the, the judge is righteous. If the judge is, the judge is corrupt, he says, ah, it's okay. No, it's impossible. God is a righteous judge. Sin needs to be judged and paid for, and you couldn't pay. I could not pay. The only one, the innocent, the righteous Son of God did Christ for all has sin and come short of the glory of God being justified freely by his grace freely grace means gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus so the redemption through the blood of Christ is in Christ Jesus is not in me or in a religious organization is in Christ Jesus. It's not in you. It's not in your works, the works of others. Praise God. So let's go Romans 7 again. This example of the woman married and then the husband died. The good news is this. Wherefore, my brethren, <clears throat> you also have become dead to the law by the body of Christ. What does it mean? When God puts you in the body of Christ, which happens immediately when you believe, because what? Well, okay, I need to explain this kind of things. Maybe it's long. Bear with me, because this is very good information from the Word of God. In Ephesians one thirteen, it says Ephesians chapter one, verse thirteen. 13. In whom you also trusted, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. So, you trusted in Christ, right? You heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, which is how the Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. In whom also, after you believed, he was sealed, with the Holy Spirit of the promise. So this is the operation of God. He takes you out of Adam and he seals you by the power of his Spirit into Christ. The Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance, the guarantee, the deposit. What is our inheritance? Well, we are, hey, at this point, we are heirs of God, a joint heirs with Christ. So, the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the perishable possession when finally we get caught or we go to the Lord when this earthly life ends unto the praise of His glory. I want to underline this unto the praise of His glory. The flesh wants to uh, receive glory, look, I'm such a holy man. Oh, look at me, I read the Bible, I rightly divide the word of truth, you know. 
Yeah, right. That's the only way you can study. So don't boast in that. Boast in the Lord. I speak to myself. I can't boast in myself. But I can boast in the Lord. Because He is such a great God. And He's a work of grace, you know. It's an operation of God. So let's go back to Romans 7. Where it says then, Once you are in the body of Christ, you are dead to the law. The law has no power over you anymore. Because you are in Christ. You receive the righteousness of Christ imputed to you. The law is fulfilled in Christ. He did it. The righteous for the unrighteous. The holy one for the unholy ungodly. The godly for the ungodly. Hmm. That if we, you should, you see the verb is a should, you got to understand this, that we are married to another, spiritually speaking, they, it's not that Christ is our husband, that we are the, the bride. Is it just an example? Even to him who is raised from the dead, the reference to the glorious gospel of death, burial, resurrection is present in all the letters of Paul continually. The, res the resurrection of Christ is so important the death is more important because he, somebody paid the penalty and that's sin for the sins of all mankind, which includes you and me. Then he was buried, but then he resurrected, victorious of hell, death, you know, the grave. And this resurrection is a guarantee of our resurrection once we get put into the body of Christ. So the law has no more power over us. We are under grace. The law was never given so that we would obey and be blessed. Impossible. If you break the law in one point, this is what James says. You're, you're guilty like you've broken the old law. And all of us has never lied. I'm not talking about a big thing like going around killing it. God forbid. But what about lies? Well, if you lie once, 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 you're a liar. So you're out. That's why you need to be bought back, redeemed, saved, sealed, put into the body of Christ and receive all the spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ which come with this glorious reality which is the body of Christ, which is the new creature, which is the revelation of the mystery, something that was hidden God for ages and generations. This is not part of the prophetic program. And Paul says, but when we were in the flesh, we were in the flesh. Yeah, before salvation, we are just in Adam, in the flesh. Our spirit is spiritually speaking, our spirit is dead, is separated from God. We are dead in trespasses and sins. We are children of disobedience. Children of wrath, like everybody else. Children of Adam. The motions of sins which were by the law, <laughs> the law said, don't do this, don't do this, and we were doing just breaking the law continually, did work in our members, the motions of sins which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit, yes, and to death. But now, he says, it's so important. But now, because now something happened, all right? Christ died, his burial was again. You believe, you heard the word of truth. You believe, you were sealed. You put into Christ. Now you're delivered from the law. And the tendency that we all have to go back to the law is present. But we need to reckon ourselves we are dead. That being dead wherein we were held, that we should, once again, in the conditional, it's because you're saved without doing anything before, during, and after. So you're saved and sealed. But now that you're saved, we, we should. That's what we learn. Serve 
in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. What does it mean? Well, now you got the spirit of Christ living in you. He came to dwell in you. You're not externally trying to obey the law that will condemn you every single time because God requires perfection. Jesus said in his earthly ministry, be perfect as your heavenly father you know, is perfect. I remember when I was in religion and I've been there a long time. I would just get, you know, completely, I can't go another day. How in the world are I going to be perfect? Because I did believe very in the wrong way. Okay, but, but I see that I couldn't be, be I couldn't be perfect. Now I know that I don't even need to try. Because now, because Christ died for my sins, the problems be solved, and He was rose again for my justification. And God, the Holy Spirit, put me in Christ. He also tells me in, in Colossians 2.10, that I, I, I'm complete in Christ. The body of Christ, every member of the body, is complete in Christ. Christ who is the head of all principality and powers. Christ who is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Praise be to God. But now we are delivered from the law that being dead wherein we were held that we should serve in newness of spirit. We walk after the spirit now, not after the flesh and not in the oldness of the letter. Once again, you see these titles, they are not scripture. I say because some people say, I didn't find, well, forget it. Unfortunately, I can't do nothing. This is the Bible. This is the Bible, Romans 7, 7. What shall we say then? This consideration, this teaching is amazing. Is the law sin? You are forbid. God gave the law, it can't be sin. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. So the law makes me know sin. For I had not known Last, for example, except the law said, Thou shalt not covet. Let's say that you, you know, you are a person that, like people say, you're moral compass, you know, you're very moral person. But ask yourself, why? Why there is this coveting in, in you? Why there is this lust in you? The law points. Da, 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 da. This is a problem. Even if you don't, Jesus said, do not commit adultery, they told you. But I tell you, if you look to a woman, he's talking to men, and you desire in your heart to be with her, and she's not your, your wife, you already commit adultery. <laughs> At this point, I don't think there is a man who is a real man. In the flesh, you know, that has no guilty of this. Impossible. It's not even a, a committed the act physically, it's just the, the situation, the fact that you have this in your man inside you, this desire, this lust. The law is like a spotlight. Ta the law tells you all the time you are a hopeless sinner, but you might not. You might not believe it, you try to fix this, oh, well, you know, I'm sorry, Lord, and go on. But, but the reality is. But sin, taking occasion by the commandment of the law, wrote what in me all manner of concupiscence. For without the law, sin was dead. But I was alive without the law once. But when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. And the commandment, which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death for sin. 
taking occasion by the commandment, deceived me, and by it slew me. Wherefore the law is holy. So, just in case, you know, we think, oh, then the law. No, the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just, and good. God gave the law. Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid. So what is the mechanism? But sin, it yeah, may appear sin, working death in me by that which is good. <laughs> so, the, sin by, the sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. For we know, he says Paul, that the law is spiritual. But I'm carnal. So down the sin. Now, you can try to change this as much as you like. It's not going to work. As long as you are in Adam, if this change doesn't take place because you never believe, receive the glorious gospel of the cross, you are carnal. You're so down the sin. And even after saved, your flesh is good for nothing. The flesh prophets, you know what? Nothing. The, the Lord said, that the words I speak to you, they are spirit, they are life. Now, he spoke words to Israel in the four Gospels, and he speaks words to us now in the letters of Paul. So, the words of the Lord, they are spirit, they are life for a spirit. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not? But what I hate, that do I. In other words, this is a tremendous conflict for the believer at this point. He's a believer. He's saved, you know. And he said, <laughs> If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that is good. I'm not discussing it. I'm not saying, Oh, this law, you know. Now then, is no more I that do it, but sin that dwells in me. You can't escape this. Even after saved, then the, the nature of Adam is still there. You will leave it at the grave or at the catching up. Whatever comes first or at the same time, I don't know. The point is, you have now a new reality, a new nature. That's the Christ in you, the hope of glory. And Romans 8 will explain now when we go there. But you got to recognize this. Because Paul says here in Romans 7 18, this is a very important verse. For I know. Sometimes I ask myself, do I really know myself? Or I try to skip this? No, for I know that in me and in brackets that is in my flesh. He's not talking about the spirit man. But the flesh dwells no good thing. Now, this is a bitter pill to swallow if you have a high consideration of yourself and you think to, to be some when I say you I say me we think to be oh look at me you know such a fantastic this and that the reality is I know that in me that is in my flesh was no good thing why for to will is present in me but how to perform that which is good I find not you're in a prison in Adam can escape. You can try with some form of religiosity of any sort, not only Christian religion, also religions of the world, through rituals and to modify, to um, how do you say, to embellish the flesh, to reform it. But the reality is spiritual, internally, nothing has changed. You need an operation of God. To will is present with me, says Paul. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. 
7 steps, 14 steps, 21 steps to live a victorious life. You try to follow those steps, I guarantee you, one step to step, you're already falling, broke your teeth, smashed your face, and you say, it doesn't work. You need not, not something external, you need an operation of God internal. You need to, to understand the done deal that Christ has accomplished. He says, for the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do, because now that I'm saved, I want to do good all the time. But I fail many times too. And I want to avoid doing anything evil. But then sometimes I do that evil. Actually, I had that sometimes. That's not there, sorry. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. And then he says, Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwells in me. What? I thought the Holy Spirit. Yes. In the spirit man, which is saved and sealed, the spirit of God lives there, lives in you. Christ in you. But thank God we have the circumcision of Christ. The cutting off the body of sins of the flesh. There's been like a cut. So it's the flesh that sins. But that sin does, at this point that you are in Christ doesn't affect your salvation. Can create problems in your daily life and work because, you know, even though it's all forgiven, Christ paid for it, it, it creates consequences. Like, just because I am under grace, if I break the speed limit, the policeman says, Stop, you broke the speed limit, there is a fine. I can say, Officer, I'm under grace. He said, That's good. That you're saved and sealed, you know, if he's a believer. But you just broke the law of the speed limit, you got to pay the fine. So sin will have consequences no matter what. And they're not good ones. But Paul is explaining now, if I do that, I will notice no more I do it, but sin that dwells in me. That's why then he cries out. He says, I found then a law. <laughs> The when I would do good, yeah, I am. I want to really serve the Lord really good now that I have the spirit and saved and see evil is present to me. I experience this constantly. It's a tremendous spiritual warfare between the flesh and the spirit. Now, praise God. Now, since I'm saved and sealed by grace, I'm in Christ, and Christ is in me. When I say me, I'm every member of the body of Christ, the operation of God for everyone who believes and receives the gospel of the cross, doesn't affect my eternal salvation. But it's a reality I've got to face. Otherwise, I'm going to say, how come I still have these problems? I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. This is a law. It says, For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, the, the new man, the spirit man, the one in Christ, the one that's sealed, delights, take pleasure in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members. Oh, 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 oh. Warring makes a war, you know, as a war against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. We're gonna receive a new glorified body, and that's gonna be over forever, but not now. When the Lord saves our soul, it doesn't kill us, instead of attack us to heaven. After salvation, we might stay another second, minute, hour, day, month, year, decade, 20, I don't know, God knows. Still in this earth, saved and sealed, and we make daily a choose, uh, choice sorry, to serve God or still give in to this terrible situation. 
sin that dwells in me. He said, but I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, they bringing me into captivity, prisoner, to the law of sin, which is in my members. He didn't say that the law of sin is in the spirit man now, in the evil man. But he cries out, Romans 7, 24, Oh, wretched man that I am! If you don't cry this with Paul, Maybe you didn't understand this conflict. And I'm not easy. I'm not saying it's easy to understand. You need to read the read and let this word modify. When you say renewing the spirit of your mind, modify it because we're born in Adam, we live in Adam, we have the tremendous experience in Adam, in a present evil world. This is the present evil world, Satan is the prince of the power of the earth, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience, is the God with the law. G of this present evil world is we don't live in the kingdom of God like somebody would like us to make a believe, you know. The kingdom of God has been prophesied, announced, offered, rejected, postponed. Christ is not reigning as a king now on his throne in Israel with the twelve and Israel, you know. No. You might be a kingdom now. You're dreaming. There's no kingdom. <laughs> and the signs in, 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 of the kingdom are not here. Actually, the opposite is terrible, you know. We need to learn how to walk by faith, not by sight, believing the word and the message that's been delivered to us. Or oh, wretched man that I am. He said, who? Not what? Shall deliver me from the body of this death. The solution? Yeah. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's the solution. So then with the mind, I myself serve the Lord God. But with the flesh, the Lord sin. You got to accept this reality, otherwise you're gonna live in a torture daily, and you're gonna fall in the trap of, I sin. Should I confess my sin? If you do that, you lose the concept. There are your sins, all of them, already forgiven. Romans, um, Ephesians one seven, and Colossians one fourteen. All our sins are forgiven, because God imputed. All our sins on Christ, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. And God, at that point, is not imputing sin to us. Otherwise, it would be double jeopardy. If imputed to Christ, and Christ paid the penalty, the point is, get into Christ. And you cannot get into Christ through a religious system, um, machination, technique, ritual of sort and unfortunately the trick is tremendous because we got the emotions you know the flesh has got emotions emotions and emotions and so sometimes you might feel so good and sometimes you might feel really down and out there's nothing to do the operation of god is happening in the spirit and you don't feel it you don't smell it. It doesn't come under the five senses. It's an operation in the spirit. You need to believe it as it's written. So after this tremendous situation, where he, he cries out, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver him from the body of this death? He, he finds the solution that you find, that we find as members of the body of Christ. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's it, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, that you did what you did. You did die for my sins and you were buried and you rose again the third day to justify me you are the new Adam you are the man from heaven you are God in the flesh you are the fullness of the God dead body you are God and man the true God the true man the Lord Jesus Christ <laughs> praise God at this point we go to Romans 8 once again, forget the title and let's go to the scripture. There is therefore now 
There is therefore now when. There is therefore now. <laughs> now. No condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. That's not to be, to have no condemnation. You have to be in Christ Jesus. And I told you before, you cannot, I cannot, nobody can put yourself in Christ Jesus. Say, okay, now I'm going to do, I'm going to pray, 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 confess all my sins to God. And I'm going to fast and pray. And I'm going to stay there isolated, you know, three, three weeks in a, in a hermit, her, hermetic, you know, I just say, like a hermit, you know. I fast, I pray, you know, and then put me in Christ, Lord. He's not going to do it. It's so incredibly simple and powerful because it's your operation of God. You simply understand you're a sinner. Christ is the Savior. Believe and receive the operation of God. The gospel of the cross, the gospel where Christ dies for your sins, your spirit rises again for your justification. You believe it, and God says, that's it. The righteousness of Christ is imputed to you, just like Abraham. Believe God, and God imputed that for righteousness. Same with you and me. Even though Abraham was the father of, you know, Abraham, Isaac, the patriarch of Israel, but the reality is he believed before the circumcision. When he was still a pagan, you know, he was from Europe of the Chaldeans. But he believed. He believed God. God said, you're righteous. Once again, it's the goodness of God, yeah? Because God is not obliged to do anything. What he does, he does out of his tremendous love. Because God, with his great love, where well, he loved us, you know, he did this. And wisdom... The wisdom of God, nobody can even, you know, you can see it in creation, even though we live in a world where they, they believe other things, you know, believe Big Bang, spinning ball and everything, the, 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 all the lies of this perverted system. But you see it. If you are simply observing the creation, that tells you there is a creator who created and made, created and made. Go read the book of Genesis. He created and made, he spoke things in its existence, he, he fashioned things. And the same thing when he creates us anew in Christ, that's the operation of God. You cannot do it, it's the operation of God. You need to believe and receive what Christ has done. And then, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. What does it mean? Well, you don't listen to that flesh anymore. You know it's there, it creates problems, it's no problem. But you know you walk after the Spirit, which is what has been revealed, written. This book, the King James Bible, I want to say, is the book of God. He wrote this book. He used people to write, but sometimes he also write with his own finger. You know, what about Jesus? He died. He write, he, he died, sorry, this. This morning, I need another coffee. <laughs> he wrote with his finger the law on table, table of stones. But even both he was writing on the on the earth, and you know all those guys were looking their names. I think they was written the names of all these people there. And he said, <clears throat> "Roberto <laughs> can be." I, I was not part of Israel, but you know what I mean. That's my understanding i might be wrong when you know they brought the, the, the adultery woman you know uh, they didn't bring the man only the woman you know the law says the man and the woman uh, to jesus ah she's be caught in the very act of adultery what do you lord moses said then she needs to be stoned where is the man okay what do you say what do you say like you know we want to catch christ he didn't answer them it's just knelt down and started to write with his finger on the sand or I don't know, on the earth. What was he writing? Some people say maybe he wrote the, the Ten Commandments. So everybody will see, I broke that, I broke that, very possible. What about if he wrote their names? Those Jewish guys, they were all men anyway, young and old. 
<clears throat> and then he said to them, okay, if any one of you was not coming, I mean, I paraphrase, you know, if, uh, you know, did this, you never seen, you know, throw, throw the first stone. And everyone from the, from the, the oldest to the young, they threw, put the stone down and they went. God can write. <laughs> Imagine if he cannot. He wrote a book and guess what? He can preserve his pure words. Otherwise, what kind of God would be that? That's what Psalm 12, 6 and 7 say. You know, The pure words of God being preserved for every generation. That's why I am King James Bible. Not because I belong to the cult of King James Bible. If you want to believe that, that's your freedom. I couldn't care less, honestly, to be honest. I've decided not to care at all of what people say or not say. I go with this book. I might be wrong and this book will correct me. No, you come and correct me. Unless you use this book in the right way to help me to see where I went wrong. Fine. But if you come, pull the brakes, love you, stay in peace, let me go to the book and study. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Why? Why, Paul? For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Oh, ho! now there is a new law in operation. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. It's so important, Christ Jesus, in this life and the life to come. He's the most important person that you can come to know. You thought he was the President of the United States of America or the Pope in Rome, but I tell you, they can do nothing for you. But this man is the Savior because he's man and he's God. The mediator between God and man. For the Lord, the Spirit of life, life, life. God is love, life and light and much more. But just comes this to my mind. The law of the spirit of life, life, eternal life, never-ending life in Christ Jesus has made me free. No, it's making me. Has made me free. Done deal, if I believe it. But if I don't believe it, still done it. But I don't enjoy the benefit because I don't believe it. That's what happens. When I don't believe, I shoot my own foot. Boom, boom, boom. You know? <laughs> For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. What is this law of sin and death? It's present in life, in Adam. Sin, death. Sin, death. It's a law. You sin, death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, my flesh was a problem. God, God, the Lord, sending his own son, I love it, in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemn sin in the flesh. He didn't close an eye, say, oh, I pretend I didn't see. No, 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 he's a righteous just, judge. Sorry. He had to condemn sin in the flesh. The sentence is passed. That the righteousness of the law, because the law is righteous, the holy and good, might be fulfilled in us, the body of Christ and every believer, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit, which is the doctrine that Christ has given us in the letters of Paul. The mind of Christ, the wholesome word, the sound words, that tell us this was your condition you couldn't get out of this but that's what Christ has done and that's the Holy Spirit applied and you are here the Godhead is there to save you and you simply believe it believe and receive the operation of God 
Yes, you believe that Jesus is God, praise God, God and man. You believe that God is God and the, the Holy Ghost is God, the Father is God, the Holy Ghost is God. But also you believe that this one in the middle, the word with a capital W, seven times present, the Son, the Son of God with the, the, the big S, the only begotten Son, not the only Son, the only begotten Son of God. He died, He offered Himself, he sacrificed a sweet smelling savor to the Father to fulfill the, world, the, the will of the Father, you know, to, because this is an agreement between God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost before the foundation of the world, and then come to rescue, to save once and for all, for eternity, the children of Adam, those who simply believe and receive. He done it for everybody because the will of God, He will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. But you need to believe it. That's what it is, man. You can't say, well, he did it automatically and say, that's universalism. It's from the pits of hell. That's really smashing. You know, that's really insulting God. You want to try, you know, to be clever than God, more clever than God. That's really something, you know. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. It means you don't sin anymore. That's impossible. You learn, you try the best, you have, but the reality is, if in my mind I have a thought of foolishness, that's sin. Anything that is not faith is sin. If I think that I'm more spiritual than you, that's pride, that's sin. You don't see it, but God sees. But that's in the flesh, and the flesh is circumcised from, it, it's cut off, you know, from the spirit. The spirit now is completely perfect in Christ, is complete in Christ. That's the operation of God. And Paul explains here. For that that are after the flesh, do mind the things of the flesh. Like everything is here, you know. This is a temporary situation, man. We're not going to be here forever. Thank you, Lord. But that that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. What does it mean? What is written in the book? For to be carnally minded is that carnally, you know, uh, carne, carne, flesh. So to have the mind of the flesh is death, which is separation from God. That's what it is. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. When you have the mind of, the, of Christ, when you have the operation of God in you, in operation of God, in, and you walk by faith, believing it, believing it, believing what God has already done, done deal, you are at peace with God, justified, therefore being justified by faith, we are at peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, peace with God. Then we can experience or access to the peace of God when? When tormented as we are from the things of this life, we get worried and stressed out, you know, and say, be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, supplication, let your requests may known unto God with thanksgiving. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and mind. Through Christ Jesus our Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then if you follow Paul and you believe what he writes and do what he does and then you learn, you know, you will, the God of peace will be with you. So, peace with God, the peace of God, the God of peace. I quoted Romans 5, but then uh, I went to, first, um, to Philippians 4. I don't remember the verse, but you can find it there. And, 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 and Philippians 4, you know. Actually, I could go there. Why not? Nobody's running up behind me. He says here, Be careful for nothing. So Philippians 4, 6. By everything. By prayer and supplication. You see, I misquoted before, you see. That's why it's important to read the words that are written in the book, and not to go with my... Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. But he already knows. Listen, man. 
<laughs> of course he does. But it's telling you to do this. Evidently, there is a value in this because this is the pure words of God, you know. Just go to the Lord and talk with Him, man. Eh? In prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. Is that the Lord? No, because, you know, how can you not say, Lord, I thank you so very much for what you've done for me. Thank you, Lord. That's just going, you know, I got this thing burdening me. Huh? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for, for hearing me. It doesn't mean anything. It's going to give you, doesn't matter, you just talk with the Lord. And he says, and the peace of God, you see, the peace of God. So, Romans 5, 1 said, therefore being justified through faith, we have peace with God, the peace with, with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, so it's supernatural, okay? How can you do this? <laughs> How did he create the world? Were you there when he asked the job? Where were you, you know, when I created uh, Job 38? And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And then he said, finally, brethren, whatsoever things that gives you least, whatsoever things that are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. And then he said, those things which you have both learned, to learn you need to study the letters of Paul. And receive. You need to believe receiving it. And heard. Well, I know I wasn't there, but you hear when you read, you know? And seen in me. So I've seen Paul doing this. You see it here. Do. Now it's going to get into action. Not to be saved. Because we already say without words to have this, and the God of peace shall be with you. <laughs> oh, mama, mama, mia, mama, mia. Tremendous God, wonderful, glorious. All right. Because I cannot mind this enemy against God. For it's not subject to the Lord God, neither indeed can be. Try as you want, as much as you like. The kind of mind is empty. That's why God crucified your flesh. You want so much, you know, that God operates in your flesh, but God says, you know what, I crucified it. I made you a new creature in Christ. It's not enough. What is? <laughs> Therefore, if any man is in Christ, is a new creature. All things are passed away. All things have become new. You are a new creature in the body of Christ, which is the new creature. The revelation of the mystery is the body of Christ. Where you, you might be a Jew or a Gentile, man or woman, bond or free, doesn't matter. <laughs> Boom, save, seal, and hair of God, the Gentiles with Christ for eternity. All the spiritual blessing are yours in Christ. And this is all by grace, through faith. So by grace, through faith. Faith is only believing it. It's not a work. Because the carnal mind is empty against God, for it's not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Don't even try. So they that are in the flesh cannot please God. What it says to you with your religious attitude and behavior and whatever you do in re your religion. You think you please God because they told you so, but in reality you cannot. You just cannot. But then Paul says something to the members of the body of Christ, but you are not in the flesh. But in the spirit, Capital S, the Spirit of God. If so be, even, huh? like, have you believed the gospel of, uh, of, of the cross? If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. I didn't ask for it. You don't need. It's given. It, we obtain. It's given without you asking. It comes with Christ. Ephesians 1.13 
It should be that the Spirit of God will in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, it's none of his. In other words, if this is enough, you didn't believe the gospel, the Spirit didn't come to well in you, you don't belong. You might be very religious. I'm not saying no. So what is the way? Believe, receive the gospel of the cross. But what? Don't repent. What about Peter Acts 2 38? Repent. Paul is not saying to you, repent and be baptized. He doesn't say, he doesn't talk about what the baptism wants. He talks about the baptism of rather by the Spirit into Christ, into his death. When you believe, you want to have the Spirit of Christ dwelling in you? Believe and receive the gospel of Christ. The reason why, say, why do you do this? Why do you preach? Okay. First of all, I need this. Given I, I am a believer, I need these instructions. Before I pass it to you, I need this for myself. Selfish. No, it's because I'm, I am not uh, uh, walking in God. You know, I am just a believer. Then I know that you believe it. And you need it. But if you don't believe, you need to believe. Because the love of Christ constrains us. Because God, in this dispensation of grace, which starts in Acts 9, and is going on now 2,000 years, and it will go on until the catching up of the body of Christ, God himself, he will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Which, it doesn't mean all men will be saved, because he can't force them. Otherwise, that would be coercion. He offers this free gift. If men receive it, it's yours. If you reject it, but then if you reject it, you don't have the Spirit of Christ, so you don't belong. Now, think of eternity for a moment. I need to do this. In this life, you can have a smooth sailing for a period, and bad, smooth sailing, bad, bad, smooth sailing, then all of a sudden you die. It's finished. All oh, that you did, the said and done in this life, uh, we should remember you, blah, blah, nothing. You just disappear. It's just like a vapor. The vapor comes up, then the, the sunlight, the grass withered, the grass is green, beautiful, flower of the grass, and then the sun rises up, the grass withered, the, the flower dies, and you finished. People, this grass. Dust. But what is finished? The flesh, your body, you're dead. The heart stops beating, doesn't send oxygen to the brain, brain dead. I don't know technically how, how long it takes. I don't know. That tells me. The thing is, at a certain point, you're dead. Physically speaking. But not spiritually. Your spirit will continue to live. There are only two chances, two possibilities, two alternatives. You either, because you said and see, or because you believe they receive this gift, 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 free gift, you will go in heavenly places to be with the Lord and receive a new glorified body together with the rest of the body of Christ, everyone. Eternity in love, joy, harmony, and in perfect fellowship with the Lord himself and with the rest of your brothers and sisters, the body, the rest of the body. Something so glorious. That's another dis discourse for another time. Or being unsaved, being none of us, you will go to hell as a parking lot and at the a certain point you will be taken out of hell and you will go to the great white throne judgment where you, your works have been examined and, and uh, condemned because already if you're there you you and you will be cast in the lake of fire not for a day a month a year a decade for eternity I implore you, I'm not asking you to become part of anything, a movement called Right Devils, no. My church, no. Send me money, no. Go around saying that I'm a great man of God, no. I'm asking you, 
as an ambassador for Christ. Be reconciled to God. How? By believing how the Christ died for your sins, all of them, past, present, future, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and he rose again the third day according to the scripture. Believe, put all your trust in that. You don't even need to say a prayer, you just believe is in your heart between you and God. After you believe, you can just thank God and talk with Him. But to receive this gift, don't do works because it's without works, the work of God. You just believe and receive. Because when you believe, you receive. I come at Christmas time, just an example, and I say, This is a present for you, my friend. And I, you look and say, I don't want it. Or you say, Oh, thank you very much. The moment you believe, you practically receive. And this gift I give to you is yours. And God, God is billion of times greater than us. If He gives a gift, He doesn't take it back. That's why He seals you with the Holy Spirit, like sealed in Christ, sealing like you are there inside, sealed. Oh, praise be to God. That's eternal security. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. We know that. The body. Still create a lot of problems. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. The righteousness of God is imputed to you in Christ. I don't think I can finish this because it's one hour. If Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. This is a guarantee, the surety, 100% on the base of the purity and the faithfulness of the pure words of God, of your resurrection, individual, individual resurrection together with the rest of the body of Christ in heavenly places to be with the Lord for eternity. Forgiven, you are accepted, blessed, complete, forgiven, delivered from this present evil world. You're a child of God now. In fact, it says, Therefore, brethren, we are dead as not to the flesh, will you after the flesh? But anyway, you not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you receive the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, I need to stop because it's too long. Go willing, I'll start again, once again. We just say, Lord, we thank you for your greatness, your goodness, your mercy, your compassion. Your, you're such a glorious, righteous God. What you have accomplished is absolutely wonderful, and we thank you, Lord. We thank you that Christ gave his, his blood, shed his blood, he gave his life for us sinners to save us once and for all from the consequences, the penalty of sin, sins that we committed. Not only that, but also it was better it was again third day to justify you, to justify us because of what Christ has done. Thank you, Father. We just give you thanks forever and ever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, Redeemer, the head of the body. Amen. Thank you for your patience. I hope that this helps. Grace and peace to all.